One controversial aspect of civil liberties we've not touched on yet is surveillance. Let's start with a definition so we know what we're talking about. Surveillance is the act of carefully watching a person or place, especially one that's suspected. <laughs> well, I'm sure we all have our own opinions on this. Civil liberties groups in most countries are concerned that we're becoming a so-called surveillance culture. That in the name of national and personal security, national governments are obtaining detailed information on their citizens and tracking their movements, internet use, financial transactions, and so on. And it's not just the government. Today, it's possible for savvy private organizations to get information on individuals from different sources and build a kind of composite picture, a profile, if you will. Some people think that this is fine if it helps the government or if their local supermarket knows their shopping habits. They shouldn't have anything to hide, right? But most people don't like it. They feel they've become part of an Orwellian Big Brother culture, that it's a gross intrusion of privacy. Are they right? Well, you can judge for yourselves, because I'm going to take you through some of the surveillance mechanisms that are out there. We'll start by looking at a few of the more familiar ones, and then move on to a more recent and technically sophisticated method. First up, cameras. Today, these are everywhere. Closed circuit TV cameras are in stores monitoring shoplifters, in cash machines identifying fraud gangs, and on public transport watching vandals and thugs. But of course, they're also watching perfectly ordinary, innocent people like you and me, going about their daily lives completely unaware that they're being monitored. You know, today in the U.S., for example, there were probably upwards of six million surveillance cameras. In New York City alone, they've increased 50% in the past few years. And in Britain, that figure is 4.5 million cameras. That's one camera for every 14 people, recording each citizen up to 300 times a day. Then there are traffic-based cameras, monitoring vehicles via their registration numbers. Right now, the UK government is considering recording all car journeys taken on main roads as a deterrent to terrorism and crime generally. These cameras are being used way beyond their original purpose. It's downright invasive. Cell phones have given the authorities another useful surveillance tool. Records of incoming and outgoing calls can be checked and used to solve crimes. That's right, just like in the movies. And something I didn't know, cell phone users can be tracked using a system called triangulation. This is when a cell phone's communication with different cell phone towers is used to locate the user's position. And seeing as these days almost all of us have one of these phones, what's there to stop security services from checking on any one of us? Then we have credit card transactions. We're all familiar with this one, I'm sure. Every time we use a credit or debit card, we're making an announcement of where we are, how much we're spending, and on what. Again, useful for crime busting when, say, unusually large amounts of money are suddenly spent uncharacteristically. But do we really want people to know this stuff? Do we want anyone having access to our financial records? Okay, let's look at one of the more sophisticated surveillance techniques. Biometric facial recognition which uses computer programs to analyze images of human faces for identification purposes. And they do it 
by taking an image, say from a photo or video frame, then they measure facial characteristics, like the distance between your eyes and the length of your nose, for instance. Then they create a template which the software can compare with another image, like of a person going through airport security. If there's a match, then hey, presto, that person gets pulled aside for questioning. They've got this system operating at a number of airports. It's also been used at major sporting events, like the Super Bowl, where pictures were taken of every person entering the stadium and then compared against a database. Now, all the instances of surveillance I've mentioned are products of the digital age, of technology that's now so easily available that it's just too simple and tempting for security agencies and commercial organizations not to take advantage of it. And here's the catch. Just to function in today's world requires us increasingly to expose ourselves to these threats to our privacy. We basically have no choice. Let's face it. How many of us these days can really manage without a credit card, an ID card, email, or a cell phone? It's almost as if, well, if we want to have these things, then we have to accept the surveillance that goes with them, right? Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but like many people, I don't believe all this surveillance is for our own good. I don't believe that those of us who have nothing to hide have nothing to fear. So it's reassuring that there are organizations out there protecting the rights of ordinary citizens like you and me. Let me wrap up with a quote from Mark Rotenberg, president of the Electronic Privacy Information Center, or EPIC, who says, that the kind of open-ended surveillance we are now seeing is, quote, the digital electronic equivalent of allowing police to go through your home without a warrant. Now that's a sobering thought, wouldn't you say?